Hey everybody and welcome to a part two of my Data Slat Vanguard series for 6th edition Tyranids. Last time we covered some of my favorite broods and formations. Um, this time there were two more broods that I left out that I wanted to try out to see how they worked. And we're going to go over the Brood Lords Hunting Pack. Now, for those of you who don't remember, formations um, in the data slate do not take up a slot on your force organization chart. You just pay the normal cost of the model. You cannot alter them. You cannot add to them. You cannot upgrade them. You can't do anything to them. But they break all different types of rules on their own, so that's okay. This is the Brood Lord's Hunting Pack, which for me is a very nice add-on for Lictor's abilities. In this one, you're going to get three formations of Gene Stealers. Uh, and one of those four nation, one of those broods, sorry, can, can, has to take a brood lord. Only one. What does it do? Well, the special things about these is... What do they call it again? Ah, Hidden Beneath the City. Hidden Beneath the City allows units from this formation that arrive from reserve to set up in any unoccupied building. That doesn't mean ruins, that means building. So if your opponent has fortifications which happen to be empty, could be in there. Or if you have any fortifications that happen to be empty, could be in there. They can set up in them. Alternatively, if there are no buildings, then you can set up in any ruins as long as they are six inches away from another unit or enemy models. So once again, that's uh, an improved on the infiltration, which now just puts the, the limit at six inches. And very nice. But that's not enough. No, because the, form, the brood with the Broodlord gets what's called a hunting pack special rule. What's that? That means when it, it gets to nominate any other unit in the enemy's models, in the enemy's armies, and get a preferred enemy rule against it. It just nominates it. Nice. I say that's nice. Once again, um, as I've always said, I like the control armies, and this is just leading to that ability to just snipe and control and place fear in the enemy's uh, uh, player's mind as they're looking around the table trying to figure out what you're going to do and when are you going to do it and who's coming in from reserve and what table edge are they coming in. And now, now they're, if, you, if, they're, if you're on a <laughs> cityscape map, then wow you're coming in from anywhere <clears throat> um, the next one is called the gargoyle biobombs oh and by the way one more thing with the hunting pack you nominate the preferred enemy unit when the hunting pack is deployed not at the beginning of the game so it's when it comes on the table that's what makes it even more situational that's when you decide who is this guy going to kill, which works very well with the horror then, which uh, is a pinning test at, at negative two leadership. Yes, obviously it doesn't affect space marines, but good enough for me. Now, the biobombs, gargoyle biobombs. This is a formation that's going to come with three spore mine clusters, and three gargoyle broods. Now they doesn't do, doesn't do anything too much special, but as you may or may not know, spore mine clusters um, only move half when they are running or assaulting, half of what they roll. Now 
the way this works is that if they're within six inches of a gargoyle, they get the Wings of Death special rule. And the Wings of Death special rule basically says if they're within six inches of a gargoyle brood, then they get to move normally. They get normal run and normal assault move. As long as they're moving with a gargoyle brood, this is supposed to indicate the gargoyle brood is shepherding them down towards the death of your enemy, and that's always a good thing. And that's actually a fairly cheap brood, uh, when you think about it. It's just three gargoyle broods and three spore mines, so that is nice. Very nice. Um, and it doesn't even affect your fast attack, so you can still put in other super crones and harpies and shrikes and anything else in there, which is it's just brilliant. The versatility that this adds to the army is, is exceedingly helpful. Uh, I hope you like that. That's the part two of my Vanguard series, and keep working. I've got some other ones coming up very soon that I think people will find interesting. I just like to take a time to uh, test out all the units at least once on the table before making opinion on it. I know that's strange for many video makers, but I try to do that. So I hope to see you next time. Please keep enjoying.